O oh Lord, reveal yourself to me anew and afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray the prayer, Father. Come and reveal yourself to me anew and afresh, O oh Lord. Teach me your ways, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Brethren, like I promised us, today we are going to be looking at religion and poverty. We've been treating poverty for a while. We took a, we took, we took a break last Monday to do commanding the year. Am I correct? So we have resumed now. A round of applause for Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, we're looking at, we've been looking at poverty since December. Why poverty is prolonged. The causes of poverty. The, uh, those things that help poverty. We've looked at them. And we defined poverty as the dominant inability or failure to conveniently meet your material and social needs. That is our definition of poverty. Now, we took our text from the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 15, from verse number 1. We're going to read it again tonight. Deuteronomy 15, from verse number 1. Deuteronomy chapter number 15, from verse number 1. Let me read from here. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. That is, at the, at the end of every seven years, whoever is owing you, you must forget about the money. That is, you, forget, you forgive the debt. Whatever you have sold comes back to you too. After seven years. Let's read. This is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lended out ought unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor. You will not collect it back from him. Or of his brother. Because it is called the Lord's release. That is, the Lord has released that debtor to go. Of a foreigner, thou mayest exact it again. But that which is thine, with thy brother, thine hand shall release. Save when there shall be no poor among you. That is God envisaged that the time will come when there will be no poor in the land. And if you say it is not possible, then it means that every seven years, you must release everybody that owe you until such a time. That means God wants that thing to happen in perpetuity. Because so long as there is a poor person, then you must release whatever that person is owing you. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. We have gone through this, actually. But I just want us to refresh our memory tonight. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let us move on. Now, we look at why poverty is prolonged. One of the reasons why poverty is prolonged is the seven advantages of being poor. There are seven advantages of being poor. We looked at them too. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Now, tonight, we are looking at religion and poverty. A noteworthy alliance of complicity. A noteworthy alliance of complicity. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. That is, complicity is colluding or conniving with somebody to do bad things. That is what it means. That is, religion is conniving with poverty. To afflict people. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, there is also another accomplice that is helping religion in making people poor. The name of that accomplice is called politics. Hello, somebody. What do I call it? Politics, yes. Politics and religion, they are twin brothers. Who pretend as if they are not related? I know you have a lot of questions tonight. And please do. Please do. And those of us in the online church too, I'm expecting your questions. Because this topic is strange. Especially for a Bible study. Religion and politics are twin brothers. 
People say religion is politics, but it's not so. It is not so. The two of them are related. And the two of them encourage poverty. And you will see why. Now, every good politician must patronize a religion. And every religious leader must play politics. Is somebody here tonight? Every good politician must patronize a religion. Let me give you an example. There is no place in the world on earth, especially in poor countries, where you will see a successful politician that he will say he doesn't believe in any God. Am I talking to you? Or he does not believe in religion. Or does not believe in the faith that is dominant in that country. There is no place on earth. In Europe, America, whatever. In, in India, whatever, whatever continent. Middle East. Africa. You will not find a successful politician. Who is not either a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, an Hindu, a whatever. He must, the religion of that country. That is popular. Reason why. And you will not find a religious leader who is always also not political. You will not find him. Somebody will say, ah, why is the pastor talking like this? Is he preaching against himself, the church? No. There's a difference between religion and Christianity. True Christianity. There is a difference between it. And you will see it as we go. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Now, why is it so? Why is it that it is not possible to see a politician who does not believe in a religion, especially the religion that is dominant in his country, or to see a religious leader who is not political? The reason is simple. is to gain control. To do what? To gain control. If you do not play along with the religion that is reigning in your country as a politician, people of that religion will not support you. They will not like you. No matter how good you are, they will not totally submit to you because to them, you are an unbeliever an outsider, somebody that cannot be trusted. So even though you may not like the God that they worship in that religion, you must pretend as a politician. That is what they are doing. If you see a politician who is a Christian, when he goes to where Muslims are gathered, you will see him wearing turban. You understand? And doing whatever. He can even hold their rosary. You will see a Muslim politician go to where Christians are. You, if you look at him, you can see him carrying the Bible. It does not mean that he believes in what they believe in. But he needs them to follow him so that he can control them. If he's, he goes to where idol worshippers are, you will see him do the same thing there. Now, let somebody from his original religion come and ask him, Ah, but your name is Sunday now. I saw you among the... the same. You see, you see, my great 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 grandmother is actually one of them. You see, but your great grandmother is late now. Yes, she gave me one name that is part of that is this because of the respect I have for her. That's why I joined them. I saw a governor the other day that said his mother named him a particular name. That is why he's affiliated to this group of people. And it is wonderful. It does not mean that he believes in them or that he supports them. And you will know the reason is just to gain control. For him, that thing is a tool. Religion is a tool for controlling the masses. You are looking at me in a strange way tonight. But why am I teaching you this? Very simple reason. You will be able to separate religion from true Christianity. One. Two, you will not reason the way the masses reason anymore. 
Because there is a way religion wants you to reason. It does not want you to ask questions. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And the reason why they are doing it is very simple. If they have large followers, a religious leader or a political leader has large followers, forget it. He will win. Why are the masses important to every religion? Even more important than the God of this religion. Why is it so? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why is it that the politicians and the religious leader, they see the masses as more important than the God they say they are worshipping? It is very simple. It makes the politicians and the religious leaders godlike. They themselves become like God. Why? If you have many people following you, sir, there are some laws of the land that you are already above. You are already bigger than certain laws. Let me give you an example. A religious leader that commits, let's say, a serious crime, maybe murder. I mean, before the camera, that the camera saw him, recorded him committing murder. Now, you are the chief of police of that city. The religious leader has one million active followers. Do you know that he didn't do anything? He did not commit any crime. Because, let us say, you say, eh, the law must take his course. Beautiful. And you are to go and arrest the man. You take your troop, your soldier, your police, and you go and arrest the man. All of you, for crying loud, out loud, cannot be more than 200,000. If you can't even muster that number. Let us assume that you are very lucky. You have people behind you. 100,000 of you went there. And this man is standing with how many? One million active people. What will you do? You have gone there to pay him a courtesy visit. You have not gone to arrest. Because you have 10 people against your one man. You say, ah, but we are carrying guns. Yes. Somebody carrying a gun in the midst of 10 fanatics is actually carrying a walking stick. Am I talking to you? So what you do? Because you don't want your men to die. And these people are ready to stone you and everybody around you. So what you do? Is to calm them down, visit the man, talk to him, come out and talk to the press. I actually heard the man's side of the story. He has a twin brother who looks exactly like him. That is the man we are looking for now. Did you tell a lie? Well, so the religious leader needs those people for his own protection. They are more important than the God he's talking about. Far more important. Even his God, he will tell them, needs them to protect him. Because he is the icon of that religion in that land. Let's move on. Oh. Look at the reason why. Why the re religious leader need the masses. One, the masses are many. That's the one thing. Yes, there are many. Majority always seem right. Uh, why is media not displaying? Praise the Lord. The the masses, majority of the people always seem right. That is why when there is an election, you see the majority carry the vote. You remember? They always say it. What it means is that this person got to office by popular vote. Does not mean that there are people who don't want him in office. Those people are just deemed not to be in the enough number to stop him. 
So, politicians, religious leaders need the masses. Because everything they do look right. Even if you don't believe in it, you dare not say it in their midst because they will stone you. Let's move on. Number two. They are mostly ignorant. Ignorant people are easy to lead. They even imagine that they are in control. Ignorant people. <coughs> Excuse me. They are easy to lead and they imagine that they are in control. Because they have their way, so they believe they are in control. Number three. The masses are the poorer group. They are the poorer group. All poor people worldwide, they have head instincts. Poor people, they have head instincts. Thank you, media. God bless you. They have head instincts. What is head instinct? They believe in banding together. And when they band together, they need a shepherd. Anybody, anything can lead them. And they cultify their leaders. They have this, they make their leaders cult figures. Their leaders are always right. If you can make yourself a leader of the masses in whatever way, whichever way, you, to the majority of them, you can never be wrong. There are some places you go. If you say anything that is derogatory of their leader, so you can't go home safely that day. You can't go home in one piece. Even if that thing is true, you must not say it. Religious leaders need this kind of fanaticism for them to remain relevant. And it's only the poor that can give it. Only the poor. The poor, the masses are never observant. They are almost totally blind. Yes. Even when the truth is glaring, they will not see it. So religious leaders know they want people who can follow them. Whatever they do, they will always be correct. They want people like that to follow them. If you see a religious leader, even in the church, you can call him a bishop, a pastor, an apostle, whatever. In the church, a prophet, if he's a religious leader, go and tell him that let me even anything that means that you are observant and it is not to his advantage, sir. You will see shout. Hey! So the devil is now controlling your mind. <laughs> oh, you have backslidden. <laughs> you say no, sir. I say, ah, then what do you mean if you have not backslidden? How did you see that I was talking to that lady in the corner of that place? Eh? How did you know that I was touch touching her? Eh? <laughs> Are you not supposed to be reading your Bible? <laughs> eh? Be going around looking at people who are talking innocently with other ladies naked. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. The masses are highly emotional. The masses are highly emotional. Yes. An emotional person is hardly logical. Because emotional, emotion and logic are two opposites. If you find an emotional person, you will find out that they hardly do things out of reason. Most things they do is out of emotion, sentiment. Praise the Lord. They are dangerous people. Emotional people are dangerous people. When they tell them, this is the problem of our religion, this man, they go after that man. <laughs> Even if he was one of them. Once the religious leader pronounced him evil, everybody forget about him. If you are in a church that is religious, when somebody offends the pastor, the pastor excommunicate that person. He will tell you don't have anything to do with him again. You will not see any member of that church greet that man again. To them, he has died. Even though he's still alive. And you now ask, what is the place of forgiveness? What is the place of restoration? Okay, should his wife and children also abandon him? <laughs> Superstitious rather than spiritual. They have a lot of taboos governing them. They have a lot of taboos. It's not only in the church. I'm talking general religion. A lot of taboos. We don't eat pork. We don't eat chicken. In our church, we don't eat food every Friday. In our religious organization, you must not do this. You must not do that. Superstitious rather than religious. The poor and ignorance, they are easier to control. That is why the masses are important to the religious leader and to the politicians. The poorer the people around you, the more ignorant they are, the more easily you can control them. I read one play by Professor Olesho Inka in secondary school days then, and Trials of Brajero. How many of us read that story, that book, Trials of Brajero? You remember the prophet that was telling, I don't know the name of that is convert. He had an issue with that one's wife. And that wife was becoming stubborn to him. He was not telling the husband to go home and flog the wife. <laughs> You know, he was saying it as if the angels told him that the man must go home and punish the wife. You know, it's easy to control an ignorant person. And that is why you will see some things happen in Africa. They are pure absurdities. They can't happen in sane places. But Africans embrace it. <laughs> they embrace it. They even applaud it. But we're in a sane environment. You don't try that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know whether you have any question. Nine basic elements of every religion. The book of Psalm, number 135, from verse number 15 to 18. Psalm 135. 15 to 18. Basic elements of every religion. You will, with this, you'll be able to identify those religions that we are talking about. To be easy for you to identify them. Are we ready? I'm reading from, from verse 15. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. 
there are things that are crafted. This religion is something that is crafted. If you look at them, let us say the religion in church. Because you can run a church as a religion. You can run a denomination as a religion. It is devoid of Christ and the Holy Spirit. They are alien. You can have a picture of Jesus Christ, a statue of Jesus Christ, whatever you can have in his name, even on the altar, written boldly. But he may not be there. You can have the Holy Spirit written, mentioned, but he is not there. Because it, that is a religion. It's something that you craft out of Christianity. People see it as Christianity. Why? Because you bear Michael, Judah, or James, whatever. You understand? You do whatever on Sunday. You go, some of them even go on Lent during Easter. They fast. Some have something, something that is related or affiliated to Jesus in one way or the other. So it is also in the church. It is then in all other religion. There are false crafts Things crafted out to look like the real one. Don't forget we define religion as man's effort to please or appease a deity. Yes, that is what religion is. It's a trap. It is not pleasing God. It is to either please or appease a deity. Appease is he's angry. Let us give him this so that he will be he will quiet him down. So that is what religion is. It is something crafted by people or somebody to gather people to follow him. Or to follow that thing as he is following that thing to his own advantage. If you read the history of many of these our religion today, you will find out that it is just one person or some people that decided to craft, carve out that thing for their own advantage. And people foolishly follow them, blindly follow them. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. So, hidden, the, the gods of the Eden are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. Don't forget, they are work of men's hands. Anything you see that they call religion, they call it, even if it is called a church of God, and you see, you do not see anything the Holy Spirit there. Run. Please run. When people go to places and they say, the pastor said they should do this. The pastor said, and those things you know that the Bible did not preach it. And you do it. And the repercussions for that thing now come. Do you blame God? Many Christians don't know that Christianity was founded by the Holy Spirit. Am I talking to you? The Holy Spirit started the church. Church started in Acts chapter 2. People, Jesus had followers. They were disciples of Jesus, worshipping God, not in the way of the Juda 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 Judaism anymore. Because in Judaism, you don't do anything, you don't work on Sabbath. Jesus worked on Sabbath. Am I talking to you? In Judaism, they have special days. They have special temple. Jesus spoke against that temple. That that is not where you worship God again. Because God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is not Judaism. I mean, he said so. He did so many things. So those people hated him. Why? Because he did not follow the tenets and doctrines of Judaism. He had another religion. But it was not named Are we still together? It was when the Holy Spirit now came and he told his disciples, don't do anything yet. Don't preach. Don't go anywhere. Stay in Jerusalem. 
The promise of the Father will come, the Holy Spirit. He said, not many days hence. He said, it will not be long from today. Am I talking to you? So, when the Holy Spirit came, he met the disciples and they received power, like Jesus Christ said. And they began to witness Jesus all over the world. Are we still together? Now, it is upon the coming of the Holy Spirit that the church was battered. They were still meeting in the temple, but they were a different crowd from the general crowd. How many people offered ram and chicken after Jesus Christ had died? <laughs> How many of them? So, the Christianity that we are talking about here it's not the religion that people have carved out of Christianity. Christianity as founded by the Holy Spirit. So in whatever the name, international, whatever, apostolic, uh, Holy Ghost, Congress, whatever, Church of Christ, that the Holy Spirit is not there. I rest my case. So that you will not say, Pastor said, praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. We are talking about nine basic elements of every religion. Every one of them. Number one, there is always a God. It will always have a God. You have to be careful around this dear God. Be careful around him. Ah. He or they, because they can be more than one, can get angry sometimes. Hmm. He has some kind of reward for the good guys. This God has some kind of reward for the good guys. If you behave yourself well around that God, don't worry. It will do some things for you. Every religion must have it. Am I talking to you? So, so the God that that religion is talking about, look at that God. Some places, it is just a bottle placed somewhere and they pour all manner of things on it and it becomes a God. People bow to it. Some places, it is an image carved. Some places, it is a picture. Some places, it is just a logo. Something that is carved out. Something that is placed somewhere. A mountain, some, sometime. Whatever, a river. Sometimes a person. A person. I was passing by a church. A church, and I mean a church. And I saw the picture of the founder, and they wrote that the founder is another comforter that was promised by Jesus and was wearing a crown, a royal crown, in that picture. So regally dressed. I said, Wow, this man is lucky. It's another Holy Spirit. That's wonderful. Holy Spirit, there are two now. The elder brother, and then this one. <laughs> See, it's another comforter that is promised by Jesus. And people were there. So many, large crowd. So that, number one, there must be a God. Every religion must have a God. There are even religions that have the name of Jesus as their own Jesus. You can call him whatever name. Some of them is, they say hey, that name is what these people call Jesus. It's a lie. There are two different kinds of Jesus. They are not the same. Look at their life. This one says he's a son of God. This one says God has no children. How can the two of them be the same? They are not. They are not the same. Praise the Lord. Number two, there is always a place, 
a place of worship, very holy. Decorated to all, even the toughest doubter. When you look at the place like this, it looks very holy. Come and see powerful decoration. Even you are a doubter, you get there and say, ah, God must be here. Uh -uh. It's as beautiful as this. God is there, Jare. But you know, it is stage management. Has a very powerful and dramatic history. That place, we have a very powerful history. Say that place is where Otibongo Tibongo the first from here enter inside the river and disappear. There will be a dramatic history. This is where so 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 went into heaven from here. This is where so 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 thing he came down from heaven and landed here before he bounced to the other place. There will be a dramatic history around that place. He will tell you, Come. Prayers are answered there. Come and pray. You see so many people trooping there. Number three. I hope I'm not rushing. Should I go on? God bless you. Number three. There will always be a messenger. Very holy. Holy messenger. Not minding that he's a murderer. Not minding that he's a cheat. Very holy. And you dare not tell them that this man did this and did this. They start fighting you. This woman did this and did this. Ah, our mother. <laughs> they start fighting you. A shining example for you. But be careful. Why following a civilized place and period? That man killed so many people. And he's an example for you. If you kill now and police get hold of you. <laughs> so anybody whose life you cannot repeat or replicate at any time in history is a useless leader. Am I talking to you? You see, that time hey, is in olden days. It cannot be done now anymore. Sir, there is a version of that thing that can be done. Jesus rode donkey. Is that not so? Nobody rides donkey now because there are cars. Is that not so? And so many other things you can use. Now, it is different from this person drank blood at that time. <laughs> you understand? So I cannot drink blood now because there is water. <laughs> are they the same? There was water also at that time. Why did he drink blood? This one washed his sword with, sword, uh, with blood at that time. I cannot wash sword with, with blood now because there is water. There was water too at that time. Any religious leader that what he did at that time has to be explained, turning reason upside down. Don't follow him. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. You see why the religion need the poor now? Because of those things, 10 things they don't do. They don't reason. They don't ask questions. They are not observant. They are in the majority. It's easy to lead them. They are poor. They have head instincts. They must be governed by somebody. That is why religion will always ensure that the poor never cease in the land. Praise the Lord. There's always a message. Number four, very authentic in quote, authentic in quote. May be written, it may be oral. Yes. Like this one, they talked about a particular God that went to a place to go and drink palm wine. Those people now put palm wine gods on the floor. They did not bend it, and he came there and beheaded all of them. <laughs> so, isn't it wonderful? Try that in 2024. The IG will come from for you straight. <laughs> it must have a message. They will find one thing to say that is the message. There are so many religions now. There is religion that worship football stars. Like Diego Maradona. 
There's a religion that worships him. There's a religion that worships this guy, Kanye West. There's a religion, so many. There's a religion that worships the backside of a plumpy woman, a fat woman. It's a religion. It's existing now. There's a religion that worships rats, some snakes, some cow. So there is. And those ones, they also have messages. Always cultural. You cannot follow without imbibing the culture. Yes. We will compare Christianity and religion after this. Any God that is cultural, that before you can read his book, his message, you must first of all learn a particular language for you to get the authentic message. It's a strange God. Why? A true God will speak all languages. A true God will not have holy language. Because all languages on earth are spoken by men. You say, but what if the language is not yet translated? That God, if he wants you to get to know him, will find a way of reaching you even without a translator. If he's alive, truly. I have read about people who have never seen or had the Bible read before. Am I talking to you? In countries where if you bring in a sheet, one sheet, one leaf of the Bible, you are a dead person. And they saw Jesus telling them we are to go to go and meet a believer because in that country there must be no churches it is illegal in fact it's a criminal capital offense calling yourself a Christian we had this person had and saw Jesus directing him to the house of a brother who also pretend because it is illegal for you not to go to their place of worship to be going there and went to him to be baptized yes in a country that country a man caught his 12-year-old daughter witnessing on the laptop. He carried her, carried the laptop to the garden, set both of them ablaze. The government promoted him the following. Am I talking to you? That one contacted Christ. Nobody knew how. And began to witness. And her father saw her. I'm talking about that kind of a country. So any God that is a true God, that wants you to know him, that does not know how to reach you, that God should go and die. Hmm? Because it's a false God. First of all, go and learn a particular language. Before you now go and look for that God, it is the God of that country you are worshipping. If you must worship God only in English, then it's an English God you are worshipping. You must worship God only in Hindu. It's an Hindu God you are worshipping. You must worship God only in Yoruba. It's a Yoruba God you are worshipping. Sorry, I'm digressing. Should we move on? Number five. Must have some power. This God must have some power. Without this power, whatever semblance of power, even a fool. That is why if you make yourself a God, you must find a way of answering prayers so, one way or the other. Either by hook or crook. You must find a way of doing it. That is why 
In those places where people go, in those false religions, you say they go there, the prayers are answered. There is a particular demon that is there. If you look at what these people do, what they do is not actually prayer, it, it is incantation. The particular word or phrase that is repeated over and over and over and over and over again, that is what they do. They are conjuring spirits. You must be able to solve problems in one way or the other. Either real or imagined. What I tell people that are going into ministry every and everywhere on earth is when you go into the ministry, any time you want to go into ministry, you must enter ministry from the problem-solving angle. Are we together? Please, those of us who are ministers, please write it down. Always view your ministry as a means of solving problems. Jesus Christ came. The first thing he did was to provide wine. Is that not so? After now, he started gathering people. To gather people, he entered into a boat. The guys were there. They've labored all night. They could not catch anything. He gave them fish. Problem solving. He began to lay hands on the sick. Heal withered hands. Raise the dead. Because of that, people, people started following. Nobody follows any religion that does not have some semblance of power. Nobody will follow any minister who is not able to solve problems. Nobody. The world has too much problem as it is. Too much. So when you want to go into ministry, ask God questions. Inside every one of your assignments, there is the ability to solve problems. Yes. Go and read the instruction Jesus gave to his disciples. He said, go. Anywhere you go, heal the sick. Healing the sick. Solve problems. Solve problems. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Without power, nobody will follow that religion. Number six, there must be a dog. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must not be lengthy, oh. not lengthy dogma. The masses cannot remember too many things. Yes. Sir, why is it that every one of us that are here, if I call all of us to recite the national anthem, that you did not hear the last person speak, that you are speaking alone, you didn't hear anybody. Many of us, including myself, will not succeed in reciting the night. Even the first verse. As I'm talking to you now, I'm trying to recollect. <laughs> you know why? It is more than one sentence. Let us reduce the national anthem to arise, O oh compatriots, arise, O oh compatriots, arise, O oh compatriots. It will become a dogma. You know why religion loves dogma? Because the masses are attracted by it. Just be mounting it. As they are doing it, they are shaking their head. Before you know what is happening, some of them will even see it and be falling down. And they say, Spirit, catch them. Must not be lengthy, must be easy and chantable. The more I told you when we we're talking about was it religion, the more chanty a religious dogma is, the more people are attracted to it, even if they don't know the meaning, even if it sounds stupid. Yes. It is difficult to understand when you allow it to be full, so they make it short. And it must be made to look very important. When anything happens to them, they say, have you recited that thing? Recite it now. Recite it quickly. And that will be like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Number seven. You must have a hope. A hope. The poor feed on hope. Yes. Something better than what they presently are going through. Sir. Yes. However silly, 
some place or some situation in the future that is better than this. And now, the poor love it. Every religion has it. You say, okay, that is why Christianity has heaven. No. It's a fact that you can confirm. Some religion will tell you about their heaven. You will shout. Say, which kind of God will be in that kind of religion? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Number eight. There is a people. These people are foolish enough not to ask any questions. There must be those people. There must be those people. Number nine, which is where we are drawing the curtain, a reward system. Every religion has a reward system. We will not be able to go into Christianity and religion tonight because of our time. We can ask questions. A means of rewarding those who are loyal. Always a means of livelihood for the clergy class. Yes. The people who are leaders of that religion. It must have a means of rewarding them. If not, that God will die a natural death. It is a God's means of self-preservation. That is why in order to get people to follow a religion, the religion must preach vehemently against riches. <laughs> vehemently against prosperity. Why? Because the more the poor you have in that religion, the better for the religious leader. The religion must speak against knowledge. Other than knowledge of that religion alone. Because the more secular or other knowledge you have, the more questions you can ask. And religion will never permit you to ask such questions. The one that churches build schools and universities that can teach you sciences inside university owned by church, they will teach you things that can make you even question the existence of God. You understand? Because they know that you need knowledge to serve God. You can now divert the knowledge to question his existence. That is your own headache. You know that religion, in false religion, you will never find. They have so managed or reduced what you can learn. So that you begin to ask any question, they start attacking you. That is the reason why such religion ensure people are poor. So religion and poverty, they yeah. are together in alliance. Praise the Lord. Oh, questions now. Questions? Questions, please. Yes, that's number one, two, three, four, five. Another person? I've seen five hands up. Any question from the online church? Okay. Let's start with that five. Number one, where are you? I thought somebody was clapping. Praise God. Hallelujah. So my question, yes, is people say politics is a dirty game. Okay. Is it advisable for a Christian to join politics? Yes. Actively. Oh, sir. You, I thought you would say, and it is a dirty game. Sit down. <laughs> I, I pray you have many questions, please. Don't disappoint me. Have many, please. God bless you. Now, people say politics is a dirty game. Yes. Politics are mostly played in a dirty way. 
it, the politics itself, is not dirty. It is because good people don't go into politics. Dirty people pack themselves into it. And what will happen? It becomes dirty. If dirty people live in a house, what will happen to that house? It will be dirty. So what makes politics dirty? It's not politics itself. It is the people who are there. There are children of God who are going to politics in other places. I remember a, a president of a particular country during COVID-19. You understand? The president said that COVID-19 cannot come into his country because the blood of Jesus will dry it up. court mm -hmm. you can't be you can't even try to to go for any um to, to even be a politician eh, that's because that is their belief there are children of god who are in politics then how can someone be a child of god mm -hmm. and still go for politics and that person will not be able to join the court and still yet the person will be able to win election win the election um, yes okay i know a pastor who has been a deputy speaker in a state house of assembly and is a pastor up to today. Am I talking to you? And he's a born again Christian. In fact, he's my ogre. There are people, children of God, genuine children of God. You see, the thing many of us think, even those that are joining those courts, they joined thinking that the courts have power. They don't. The power of every cult is the people. Just like every false religion, the power is the people. The people they are able to lure into that cult, they are the ones protecting that cult. Am I talking to you now? They are the ones protecting the cult. I have seen many people who are in cults that if you go to them and you talk, they are regretting seriously because they were tricked into those cults. The biggest thing that any cult can give you, the biggest is connection and money. The biggest. The two of them come by way of patronage. That's all. Not spiritual power. They don't have it. They don't. Even the diabolic power, they don't have it. So that is the highest they can give you. I know a person that was invited to come and join a cult. He now asked the person, me and you, look at us. Who is better off? That one could not answer. 
You say you ride Okada. Me, I ride a jeep. You understand? I have built two houses. You are still a tenant. You now say I should come and join your cult. Your cult will help me. Should your cult, cult not join me? That one ran away from him. You know why they lure those people? If you are in position of authority, maybe you are holding a political position. Or you are holding an official position. Maybe you are a policeman, a soldier, this, that, that. You understand? Somebody that can help them protect their whatever. They come and lure you. Ah, hey, everybody is inside though. Even that one. Even this one. Even this. And you too now. If you are not, you now foolishly enter. When you enter, they tell you. Once you enter, you can't go back here. Go and listen to their slogan. Read the articles. I have read it. You'll be surprised. You ask yourself, then why are people joining? God bless you. So it is not what gives people. Ah, is that all? She never came. I thought she had many questions. What's your number? Still on, okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. Still on that matter. Hallelujah. Politics. Yes, let me put it that way. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 55, verse 33. Yeah. It says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Hallelujah. Now, can a believer join politics and not be corrupted? God bless you. Yes. How, sir? God bless you. I just told you that if God permits me, I will join politics. Am I talking to you? And I will contest elective office if God says so. You know that I will tell you that God says I will be the president of this country oh, and I will now fail election. Oh. <laughs> Not that type. Oh. Not the one that will tell you that God says I am the next president and I will now Fail primaries, not that you understand. But if he says so, I'll go ahead and do it, sir. If you don't stand up for something, you fall for anything. So if you wait and say it's a dirty game, dirty people make laws you follow, dirty people kill churches, and you have no choice. They make a law that church should not run. You have to close shop. So what are you talking about? Sir. The Lord will bless us. Number two. Hallelujah. I thought somebody was clapping. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, uh, I want to... You to share more light on this. Uh, the poor and the religion. The, okay. You know, so maybe I can say to my own understanding, I believe a religious is supposed to draw someone out of poverty. Oh, okay. But nowadays, we can, we can find some situation that the religious... Religion are more drawing people into more poverty. <laughs> He's drawing people into poverty more. More, yes. Okay. God bless you. Ah, uh, is that the question? Yes, sir. Any other one? We have more. Yes. Okay. God bless you. See that I like you. See, God did not promise even true Christianity. God did not promise you financial prosperity, of kind financial wealth, I should say, or riches, but. In following God, there is no way you can be poor. In being led, don't forget we have treated it. Jesus said the poor had gospel preached to them. You remember? <laughs> so, in being led, you will know secrets in that business you are doing that a non believer will never come close to. Am I talking to you? Because of the Holy Spirit, He will teach you, He will show you some secrets. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. The reason why people fail in business is just little, little mistakes that are repeated. 
That's all. That's all. That is all. Look at the stock exchange, for example. Now, if I go into stocks as a believer, now, what will I do? I have this capital. I will ask, which should I buy? And the Holy Spirit will direct me to a particular one, and I buy. Am I talking to you now? Now, the one that is doing well now, the Holy Spirit may tell you don't buy it. And you say, oh, this one is doing well. But Holy Spirit, that is the one you should buy, the other one. You want now go and buy that other one. And before you know what is happening, this one that was doing well starts coming down. Am I talking to you? It happens. A friend of mine got loan and bought particular shares. And the shares came up. And he was able to buy a brand new car with the proceeds of that, that shares. He had, at that time, 4 million naira. The money came up to 4 million. He took 2 million naira, bought a brand new car. I saw the car. After he bought that car, the, lo the money, the shares crashed such that he was blaming himself for not using the 4 million to buy the car and then sell off the car later. When that share came up, banks were begging people to come and take loan and buy into that shares. People bought. When it crashed, they sold some people's houses because of it. They made mistake. You don't know so? Because there was no leading. Am I talking to you? Such is the power of being led by the Holy Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. So, because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will excel in business. Conveniently excel. Because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will be a principality and power in the job you do. Because of the leading of the Holy Spirit. In your academics, you will excel because of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Just picture the Holy Spirit telling you where and where to read before an examination. It does happen. My pastor told us then that he was writing icon. It was a Sunday school house fellowship superintendent in his church. He did the icon the first time he failed. Ah, he went to his pastor. He said he would not be able to continue as this thing. He could not read very well. The pastor said, ah, you will have waited. Pray. God will give you. He said, no. He left it. That year that he said he wanted to read properly, he failed more than he failed the previous year. He now went to the pastor to go and cry. The pastor said, I was telling you to wait. Continue the job. Tell the Holy Spirit to, to help you. So he now continued as a making the third year. Continue at the Sunday school superintendent. They gave him more places. I have as well as superintendent. They gave him more places to cover. And he was covering it. He was creating time to read. Covering it, creating time to read. He said the day he wanted to go for the examination. As he carried his bag, he was going. The other colleagues that were carrying, the, that, that were going together, one of them had a car. All of them were parked in the car. He came, they, they got to his house and hung. He came in to lock the door. And the Holy Spirit told him to pick this small book, key points. You know these key points that they sell now? So he picked that book. He went back and picked the book because he had picked that book. And he began to revise with those books, with that book. You know those ones are key points, short, short, this thing. He said when he got into the examination hall, the first question was the first question in the key points. He wrote it down. The second question was the second question in the key point. He wrote it down. The first five questions were the ones he saw. He wrote them down as he saw them. He passed with flying colors. He said, before he even saw that he passed, as they were coming back home that day, he was rejoicing. You know, in the candidate, after doing the exam, now people will be blabbing. Ah, that number one, I blew it. Wow. My result this year, it will be powerful. They now began to revise the questions. He said they called the first question. The people that answered it, answered it wrongly. He corrected them. Ha! They brought out their own thing. They saw that he was right. They called the second question. They were wrong. 
They brought, they checked it. They saw it was right. They brought the third one, the same thing. The driver parked. He said, get down. Get down from this car. They pursued him out of the car. In anger, he passed. Never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit in making you whatever God wants you to become in life, not minding where you came from, not minding your lineage, not minding this disadvantaged position that you came from, not minding the poverty that exists in your family, not minding the poverty in the country where you came from, not minding whatever indices the world has against you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My second question, Daddy, I want you to share more light on do as occasional serve me. Okay, God bless you, sir. A round of applause for Jesus. Being as occasion, ah, is that all? Why are people not asking questions now? Oh, praise the Lord. Doing as occasion serve you, for God is with you. Is that now, this year, 2024, you have everything on earth working for you. Everything. The rain is falling for you. The sun is shining for you. The wind is blowing for you. Whatever economic situation is for you. So, as you are led, take steps. You are led to start a bakery. Go. Go and start. You don't know anything about a bakery. The first baker of the world had to learn one way or the other. You are learned to open a fashion shop. Go ahead. You don't know how to do it. People are teaching people. Whatever you need to learn, learn. Take action this year. For God is with you. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, next person. Hallelujah. A round of applause for Jesus. The thing I don't like tonight is that you people are just asking two questions, one question. I believe, staff, okay, you will have five. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just one question, sir. Ah. Oh. Hey, Daddy, in our last uh, lesson, okay. you said that Jesus has killed poverty. Yes. Then why are some people still remain in poverty, sir? The poor shall not cease in the land. You know, read in the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 15, from verse 1 to 11. The poor shall not cease in the land. I think it's verse 10 or verse 11. You understand? See, Can we say it's the word of God that is coming to pass or what? It's not the word of God, it's choice. Okay, God bless. That's your only question. Find more. Go and find more. God bless you. See, let me explain this. Everybody was born poor. Everybody was born dirty. Everybody was born naked. Everybody was, gone, was born hungry. Is that not so? And uh, what's that one? Everybody was born crying. Five. Everybody was born that way. Everybody upon being born on this earth, you start relocating yourself, repositioning yourself to receive your own allocation because indeed all of us have our own allocation. But your allocation is always tied to your location. You come to this world to be a barber, for example, but you are a medical doctor. Child. It's a disaster. Am I talking to you? Find your own assignment. And in that assignment, you will prosper exceedingly. I remember some years ago, I was in business then. My then secretary invited me to be a master of ceremony in a man's 75th birthday. So when he told me what the man was, how the man was preparing for that birthday, I refused to even attend. Even though I knew the man and 
I was even at that time consulting for the wife's business. I was consulting for her. I refused to attend. She said, why? Vibration of failure. 75 year old man. That day I made up my mind that once I turn 50, I will not contribute a dime to my own birthday anymore. At that time, I was like uh, 28, 30. That once I turn 50, if it is biscuits and water, that people are able to use in celebrating me for my birthday. Let them use it. I will not contribute a dime. That man bought everything to be used for his birthday. Rented the hall, the auditorium, gave his children the clothes to wear, paid every one of them 40,000 naira per person to prepare. At that time, 40,000 naira would be like, uh, like 500K now or 1 million. It's as bad as that. He sold a large expanse of land to celebrate his 75th birthday. He said, I will not go. He was supposed to be a rich man, but to me, he was wretched. One of his children was. 47 years, he could not afford to transport himself to his father's birthday. Every one of us, you will not miss it all. There is something that God created you for. Find it. Do it. Be diligent in it and you will prosper. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Have you seen a man who is diligent in his business? His business, meaning his assignment. He shall stand before kings and not before laymen. Another translation says, you will stand before kings and not before obscured men. Find your assignment. Do it. That's your prosperity. is tied to your assignment. It's tied to it. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, next person. Ah, hallelujah. What's your number, sir? Number four. Okay, a round of applause for Jesus. Are people tired of clapping? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My first question is, what okay, can make... Very good. You're a wonderful man. Your first question. Hallelujah. What can make the promise of God to fail in one's life? God bless you, sir. Sit down. The things that can make the promise of God to fail in a person's life. Number one, sin. Sin is a reproach. When somebody puts in stand into iniquity, that person is not the person God promised anymore. Do you understand? Do we understand? God said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will do this and that. You understand? If Abraham refused to walk before God, the promise has failed already. Not because God failed, but Abraham is not the person God promised. Be thou perfect. If Abraham refused to be perfect, the promise will not come. So the first most important factor that makes promise to fail is sin. Sin shortens the hand of God. Don't forget, God is merciful, God is kind, God is wonderful, God is awesome, but God is also just. God is also righteous. Now, the sin in our life make the devil to accuse us before God. Say, ah, why should you bless him? Is he not the one that did this one? <laughs> and because God is just, God has no option other than to be looking at that person. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Question number two. Okay. Uh, wait, along the teaching, uh -huh. You mentioned that uh, uh, some things that we do that are not in the Bible. That are not in the Bible. Inside the Bible. I don't understand. Uh, like, there are times some people will ask questions. Ask me questions. So, they will now tell you back it 
a Bible quotation. Okay, okay. And there are some of these questions. It that are not, not backable. Yes, it is not compulsorily you must have it. Word they, for word Bible quotation for yes, it. Yes, okay. They, okay. Will, they will not agree to it. Who will not agree to that? The people that ask the question, that say, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, so okay. it's not in the Bible, it's, they will not follow it. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, they are making mistake. Is it in the Bible to eat ever? <laughs> or Amala? Eh? No, sir. They shouldn't be eating it then. They should eat on living bread and roasted meat and then wine and use olive oil to cook all the time. See, there are, there are, the Bible is mainly principles. There are principles that if that thing is not there in word, it can be there in spirit. That is in principle. For example, now, please sit down, sir. God bless you. For example, a man runs to a pastor to say that he has committed a sin and that there is a particular uh, maybe law enforcement people, you understand, that are looking for him. Now, what does the pastor do? The pastor can go to the law enforcement agents to report the man. Is that not so? The pastor can tell the man to go and report himself. Is that not so? The pastor can pray for the man and still take him to the police station. The pastor can pray for the man and ask the man to ask for forgiveness of sin and pray that God should forgive the man because he has asked for mercy. Which one is by Blaker? Is the pastor a member of the police? If the police refuse to arrest the man, should the pastor take the man to them, seeing that they have not declared him wanted? Am I talking to you? The pastor leaves the man to his conscience. Because he did not hear anywhere that the man was declared wanted. Even what the man came to report to the pastor might not have been found out. Maybe a traffic offense. Anything. An accident. Whatever. Sir. If in only what the Bible says, only and nothing other than that, The marriage in Ghana will still exist today. And the pastor will have to provide wine. Is that not so? Because he's a representative of Jesus and Jesus provided wine. But the pastor today, in a marriage such that the wine ran out, it is not the physical wine that the pastor is interested in. It is the spiritual wine of the Holy Spirit. So those that are insisting that every question must be answered with a Bible-backed uh, reference. I think they are too biblical for my own understanding. God bless you, sir. I have prayed with people who were in jail outside this country. They were in where? Jail. Haven't committed a crime. Let me try and remember a particular one. The younger brother needed help from that his elder brother. The younger brother was here. I prayed for him and he got somebody that want to help him travel abroad. He needed 270,000 naira. He now told me, ah, if my brother was around, he would have been able to help me. See that my brother did a lot for us in our family. This, this, this. this. I said, what happened to him? He said he is in a particular country. He mentioned the name of that country. I said, I yeah, call him now. He said, I can call him, but he cannot help me because he is in jail. Huh? I said, in jail? Why? He told me why. He said he had six years to spend in jail before he would come out. I said, tell him to give his life to Christ and ask for forgiveness of sin and he will be released this month. Aha. 
The guy looked at me that this one is, is an occultic pastor. He actually started avoiding me. <laughs> you understand? He started avoiding me and I left him. And after some time, maybe somebody told him, go and do what the man has said. So he came back. And he told me he had spoken to his brother. His brother had asked for forgiveness of sin that day. And me and that guy knelt down. And we prayed. And I told him, tell your brother, if he does that thing that he has pleaded for forgiveness again, they will behead him. The brother was released that month. He stayed in that country where he's supposed to be repatriated for six months. Processed his journey back to another country. See. Is it written in the brief for a criminal? I have never met him before. I did not collect any proceed of that. He didn't have any proceed. He was in jail. Sir. But God is merciful. Do you know the Bible, biblical principle? It is in the Bible. The woman that was caught in adultery, that they took to Jesus, did that woman not commit adultery? But what did Jesus say? Let who is without sin cast the first. Those people that arrested that man, they have seen people who have done similar things that they have not arrested. God bless you. My third question has been asked by okay. Sister Blessing. She stole so, your notes. The, the last question is that these religious people, okay, all these things they are doing, contrary, don't they know that they are going to hellfire? God bless you. Their religion may not have that kind of hellfire. Some gods are very permissive. See, the reason why people follow false religion is that false religion patronize them too. Like a religion that tells me if I kill in the way of this my religion, it is heaven. So, and I hate my neighbor. <laughs> and kill him so that I can go to that heaven. <laughs> is that not so? eh? If I miss me, whatever. If I steal for the purpose of this religion, do you know there are religion like that? It is good. Then I have not stolen. Even if I take all the budget of the country, I swallow it up. And I give like 2% or 1% for my religion. I go to heaven without stealing. There are so many different kinds of heaven. The one that pertains to every religion is different. Always different. Some people miss it. Thinking the heavens are the same. They are not. Oh, God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. A round of applause for Jesus. Ah, do we still have? Okay. What's your number? You have no number. Okay, you are the number last. Come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to ask that. How? You? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sir, how can we avoid being in masses? How, how can we avoid being in the masses? Change, stop, stop thinking the way the masses reason. The masses are emotional. They are not logical. Stop being emotional. There are things that happen in society. Sit down. Something is trending now. There is a particular guy that was accused of having hand in a particular guy's mother. Do you remember? Recently. Now, that guy dropped some music, uh, uh, this thing, titles, that was not so powerful. People did not flow to it like they used to. Now, everybody that was vilifying him, talking blah, blah, blah about him, his PR people went to work. They did a show, a public show.
and I observe. It's very entertaining, actually, looking at them. Very, very entertaining. Especially when politician is talking. He say, my people, all of them say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> God bless you. Let me not talk too much. <laughs> Sir, can the masses be reduced? Reduced. Reduced. Like you said, there are too many. Eh, they can't be reduced now. They give birth more. You understand? They, they don't die as often, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> when you and nobody can pray for their death, they should live long. I be everybody happy. God bless you. <laughs> Sir, there is the Islamic religion. He said in the nine elements of every religion that there is always a God. Yes. And they always have power. Yes. That does that some, mean that some power. does that mean that the Islamic religion have a God they serve and a diabolic power? Every religion has a God. That God must have some power. He must. Nobody will follow a God without power now. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? If I put a bottle here that you should do this and do that. And you say you want to buy a car. You tell that bottle, car does not come. Bicycle does not come. And I call you again. You do it. <laughs> ah. No, every God must have. I must find, go and find something that must make that to work. God have some power. Even if you cannot bring a bicycle, you can bring a wheelbarrow. People will still celebrate. Say, ah, even if it's not, there's no bicycle. It's a wheelbarrow I got. It's still the same way. He has wheel. So God bless you. <laughs> All gods must, must have some power. Praise the Lord. Ah, will I allow you? Just one question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, somebody is raising hand. I don't know whether okay, I will allow you. Is it possible for one to be a Christian and still become like a king in cultural Africa? Yes. And not can. follow the traditions? Yes, it's possible. Like some traditions of, you know, the king is not allowed to open his hair. Is air in public? Yes, in public, yes. or people cannot call him by name. Okay. Is it possible to follow this kind yes, of Yes, yes. Yeah, is you see, God bless you. There is the culture of a people. There is the religion of that people, of those people. Am I talking to you? The culture all over the world. Most of our cultures are wonderful. All over the world, not just in Africa. Culture, the food, the language, the dresses, you know, the dances. Now, the challenge is the religion that is attached to that culture. Am I talking to you now? This religion is the problem that people are having. Now, a king may be of another religion. Even in Europe and all these places, their kings were not Christians in, initially. In Rome, their kings were not Christians initially. This Roman Catholic, you understand? The, it was Con Emperor, Emperor Constantine became a Christian. If he became a Christian on his deathbed, he was baptized when he was about to die. And he adopted that religion as a state religion. Am I talking to you now? So he was worshipping a particular religion before that time. So a king can change his religion. It is the culture of the people that cannot be easily changed. Now, wanting to now insist or impose his religion on the people is another ball game. It's another thing entirely. Because he did not meet those people with that religion that he is bringing. Am I talking to you now? For example, now, a pastor, I mean kings on ancient stools, not king of so-so-so-so street, too. You know king of ancient stools. I've seen pastors who have become such kings. And they are pastors. And they are also kings. It is the religion that has changed, not the culture. It still wears the regalia. They still do all those. It is the going to the shrine to go and do this and that, which is not part of the Google. <laughs> if you study history of such things, those people who started it were just craftsmen. They were not 
uh, uh, priests. You know, priests. Like the Google Festival. The tailor and his friend. They started it. It was things that people learn as trades. Before it now became uh, our family, we are, that's our family, this thing. Before it became, uh, we are the one doing this Egungu for this family, or for this country, or for this city. Praise the Lord. So a king can be a pastor, or whatever, or a born-again Christian. Ah, let me give you a bonus. Run forward quickly. That's the last person I'm giving tonight. I thought somebody will clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sir, is it possible to have masses in the church? In the? Masses. In the way? Church. Ah. Uh -uh. Ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are masses in the family. <laughs> in the family. In the family of five. Eh? There are masses there. Five people. You will see the people who are ruling in that family. Is that not so? Eh, what are the others? Stand to your feet. <laughs> Stand to your feet. Let's go. <laughs> somebody, has somebody learned anything tonight? If you are learning anything, shout hallelujah. We are rounding off on the topic poverty by God's grace next week. What is that topic? Crawling out. Are you with me? What, what did I call it? Crawling out. We have seen how religion cage people. We have seen the role of government, the society, the mind of the poor himself. So we are not going to look at how to crawl out of it. Not minding the religion, not minding whatever the culture. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Somebody wave your hands and bless his name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank